Hello, and welcome to the 8th video in the Sleek Creed and C Sharp series. In this video, we're going to be doing the challenge called String to Integer. So if we switch over to World Web Browser, and let's start. So, implement the MayaToy string as function, which converts a string to a 32-bit signed integer. The algorithm is as follows. Read in and ignore any leading white space. Check if the next string, if not already at the end of the string, is dash or plus. Read this character in if it is either. This determines if the final result is negative or positive, respectively. Assume that the result is positive if neither is present. Read in, ne read in next the characters until the next non-digit character or the end of the input is reached. The rest of the string is ignored. Convert these digits into an integer. If no digits were read, then the integer is zero. Change the sign as necessary from step two. If the integer is out of the 32 sign bit, then clamp the integer so that it remains in the range. Specifically, integers less than negative 2 to the power 31 should be okay. So we'll start off with int output equals 0. And actually, read this. So if it's 42, turn 42. Yep. I mean, that all makes sense. Ignored. It's a negative number. 42. That all looks pretty easy enough. So, I guess the first thing we can do is we can get rid of the white space. So I think, yep, so the function trim start. So we only need to get rid of the white space at the very beginning, so may as well just do trim start. So then we can do for each, actually we'll change, the, we'll create another string variable for building the output for each car C in S. We'll create a boolean as well for if the number is positive or negative. So if c equals minus is positive equals false, then continue. I'm thinking next is C sharp. Instead of doing like a try pass to see if it's the character's number, we can just do if c is in 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, if car in string, okay, you can do that. If I'm sure, there's a better way to do this, but can't be bothered figuring that one out. Oh well. So if it does contain string output plus equals c dot two string else. You break. So at this point, okay, we also need to check to see if it's greater or less, if it's outside the int32 limit. So this one was talking about a range. Actually, I'm pretty sure there's. Just an int32, like max value, min value, which we can use. Yeah. But I wonder if doing a check like this where the string values. No, you can't do it just to check to see if it's greater than. Actually, for here, we will. I don't think we actually need to properly do this check. We can just do like this. But I'm not sure how it works if you have a string which starts with a plus and then you'd convert that. I don't I've never seen that before, so let's just comment this out for now. I wonder if we can use math.clamp, but I would assume that we're just passing in a regular number value. Actually, maybe we like convert it to a double or something, and then do this check. I think that's a good idea. Okay, we'll just grab this. We we'll probably have to import something, but I'm not sure what. So we we'll go here. So we'll do that. If 
num greater than int 32.max value then output equals int 32 max value then we'll do one for less than in value there goes min value else output equals int dot pass num let's give this a test no surprises there I'm always forgetting these semicolons oh, and also print parentheses the name int doesn't exist in the current ah in 32 to pass my bad cannot convert from double to read only span car I am not sure how this is possible let's just look up this error Okay, I guess we'll use convert to in32. Let's see if that works now. Okay, that did work. So that works, that works, that works. Now what happens if we have a plus at the beginning? Okay, that does work too. I've never seen string of the plus and then converting, so let's submit and see if it works. Input string was not in the correct format. Ah, okay. I thought it was just, it might start with white space and then get to number. Okay, it doesn't do that. We will do bool num found equals false. Change that to true. And then else if num found Let's give this a shot now. Wrong answer. Why would it expect zero? Okay, let's read this again. Read in and ignore any leading white space. Check if the next character, if not already, at the end of the string is negative plus. Okay, so it is only ignore the white space at the beginning. So if, let's do if it's not found, we just return zero, else break. Let's submit that. I'm not sure how that returned zero so he comes here oh whoops this is meant to be outside of the loop now let's run submit input string was not in the correct format oh that's interesting what happens there if it's multiple okay we might actually need to get that the ball is positive back equals true and we'll do else if so we're going to remove the plus negative here we're gonna do the check here then we'll do is positive equals c equals plus then down here when we convert we will then do if not is positive num equals num times times equals minus one okay, now let's give that a shot okay same thing again okay well need to get rid of all this. I assumed it would be that if there's multiple it would just change what it's meant to be, but I guess not. So we still need it like this, but if so if it's if num not found, it's string output like that. Otherwise it's return zero. Okay, what's the problem now? The same one. What's going on with this? Why is it just giving an error and not actually saying what value is being returned? Or what? What's going on? Maybe we do do this. Or maybe it's just if 
if it's negative, we just we plus. Otherwise, there's no need to do anything. If it's output negative twelve. Oh my bad, I forgot to do this. Now that should work. Okay, now it's submit. Okay, well, I didn't think to check about length of character. Okay, so do if length, if s equals nothing, or it doesn't contain a number. Uh, it's good fun having to deal with all these little things to make sure it works. Alright. Okay, don't need to do this, we'll just add another one called symbol found. And that's where this will be done. Now let's try again. I thought that would have fixed it. I guess we also need to go down here and do that if statement check. Interesting. Okay, I guess we should also do symbol found true up here as well. Because that should have just returned a zero. Oops, didn't mean to do run. I meant to do submit. So it's going here, symbol was already found. We'll do else if break. Otherwise just return zero. So many little things to get caught up on. It's annoying. <laughs> okay, finally. After so many little ways to get caught up on, so many things to overlook. We've finally done it. <laughs> if you enjoyed watching this video, make sure to like and subscribe so you see more videos in this Lead Code and C Sharp series.